Here's a story about the most terrifying airport in the world. Your plane is diving straight for a mountain. At 700 meters, they turn off the autopilots. You scrape over the rooftops of the city, close enough to see inside people's homes. Just over 3 kilometers out from landing and 300 meters off the ground, the pilot ignores their instruments, eyeballs a 47 degrees turn, and touches down on a sliver of runway surrounded by water on three sides. A heart attack averted, the plane door opens, and you step out onto the ash field of the legendary Kai Tak International Airport in Hong Kong. It's also the 5th of July, 1998, and you were on the last flight to land here before it permanently closed. Skip forward 26 years, and this area has come quite a long way. What was once a relic of a bygone era is now the center of one of the world's most expensive redevelopment projects. The most important aspect is that getting into it is going to be much easier as well thanks to some world-class engineering and a new piece of equipment we've never seen before, which quite literally reinvents the wheel. This is Hong Kong. Forget terrifying airports. Today, this city proudly claims to have the best public transport in the world. Its trains, trams, ferries, and buses provide 9.7 million journeys every day. Almost half of all households are within 500 meters of an MTR station, and trains arrive on time an incredible 99.9% .9 of the time. Part of the reason Hong Kong's infrastructure is so good is because it has to be. 7.4 million people live here, mainly squeezed into super tight pockets of housing, which are among the most densely populated on earth. Between these urban centers are around 500 mountains and the South China Sea. So anything that gets built here has to be constructed with infrastructure in mind. Back to Kaidiak, the site of the old airport, is located right in the heart of the city, here in Cowan Bay. In 2007, a plan was approved to turn the 320-hectare site into a mixed-use residential, commercial, and leisure district. The tip of the former runway is being transformed into a tourism and leisure hub, featuring a foster and partners-designed cruise terminal that opened in 2013. The rest of the site, meanwhile, is being developed into a premium office and commercial district along with a very large park. At the top of the site, a 50,000-seat stadium is nearing completion, and work is well underway on a large residential neighborhood. When completed, 150,000 people are going to live on this site, making it one of the densest urban areas in the world. Connecting all those people to the rest of the city is a major challenge. The north of the site is bordered by two of the busiest roads in East Kalen. To prevent the development from being cut off from everything else, a series of tunnels and bridges are being constructed around the perimeter of the site. But with such a dense network of roads, how do you build something that's big enough to meet capacity without impacting the constant flow of traffic nearby? That's a headache for Hong Kong's civil engineers, who are dedicated to ensuring that people's journeys around the city are as smooth as possible. But it's not just roads and tunnels that are important for making your life a breeze when you're traveling around. Balancing the needs of the developments and the demands of heavy traffic was a problem faced by the Hong Kong Civil Engineering and Development Department here, where a 140-meter-long tunnel was needed to connect Shinkai Road to Chung Estate. Now, with shallow underparts like this, the easiest option is often to use the cut-and-cover method. This involves digging a trench and laying tunnel segments, which are then covered back over. However, here, that would involve diverting 20 lanes of traffic, including two major arterial roads. No problem. Time to fire up a tunnel boring machine and get digging. But actually, that's not an option either because Hong Kong is so dense. The land underneath this area is crossed by a series of water mains, electric cables, storm drains, sewers, and foundations for the Kwantung Bypass. Had the tunnel been deep enough, that wouldn't be a problem. But for such a short route, a shallower tunnel was needed, which would expose a crucial flaw of tunnel boring machines. You see, when a TBM makes its way through the earth, it creates an effect called settlement as it excavates soil. This creates weakness in the ground above the cutterhead, as the earth moves down to fill the void. Now, with enough clearance, this doesn't have any effect on anything above. But the alignment at Choi Hong lies just under 7 meters beneath the surface at its shallowest point. This effect of settlement, made worse by the weak alluvial soil, would pose a serious risk to nearby utilities, like this storm drain which is just 1.5 meters away from the tunnel roof. So how do you solve a problem like the one at Choi Hung? Well, the answer was this, a rectangular tunnel boring machine. This was the first of its kind ever to be used in Hong Kong, 
and one of only a handful of art BMs in the entire world. Here's how it works. The rectangular shield houses five cutting heads. The one in the center does the majority of the work, but the four in each corner rotate elliptically, creating a rectangular excavation. This excavation is dropped into a shaft and pushed forward by a hydraulic jack for reinforcement. The tunnel's 92 concrete segments, cast nearby, are dropped in behind the art beam one at a time. When the tunnel breaks through and is complete, the jack seals the gaskets, and the art beam is removed on the other side. But how is this safer than a standard TBM? Well, when a circular TBM creates settlement, that force is focused onto a point at the top of the cutter head. Because the art beam has a large flat surface, it spreads the effect of the settlement over a larger area, causing less disruption to anything above it. The Chong Tunnel opened in November 2021, and the method has proved so successful that it's now being used elsewhere on the project, such as here at Sun Wang Toy, where a new underpass is being constructed beneath 15 lanes of traffic. But what is all this for? There's a huge amount of effort going into using the next generation of tech. Surely this tunnel is being used for a major new highway or high-speed rail line? Well, no. Both the Choi Hong and Sun Wang Toy tunnels are pedestrian subways. Now, it might seem surprising that such a massive amount of work and innovation is going into something as simple as a pedestrian underpass. But that's kind of the point. Attention to detail on something as small as this is exactly what makes Hong Kong's civil engineers some of the best in the world, and what allows this city to keep moving. As always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to Build Bright.